get this. She's harmonizing. Isn't that what you call it? There it is. Wow. I didn't know that. The enthusiasm. <laughs> and you're not even seeing why she go over here. She's oh, not yeah. a celebration. She get over here. We got to see you get there. I mean, it's like a whole team. Wow. <laughs> Come on. That's enough off-air people. <laughs> Go back to where you belong. You've got to join the union next time. Go back time. behind the camera. Pat Scott has joined his cast of The View yes. and do his story. Uh, number six, you might think you're hot for your coworker, but there's a good chance it's only office goggles. Huh? Uh, that's when you get lulled in by the tiny glances at each other during a meeting or the flirting you do during office happy hour. You're caught up in the game, but is it real? Is it worth it? Mm. And there's a rule for keeping yourself from getting swayed by office goggles. Relationship experts say take a step back, maybe take a trip to the restroom. <laughs> or, uh, Not or, with that person. Or go outside <laughs> and then say to yourself, if I saw this person on the street, would I actually like them? That's the big barometer right there. Because a lot of times, you're just looking at your options in the building. Okay, true. And you're like, well, all right, they're the best looking person out of the <laughs> collection I have here, which is not saying much. Uh, and if you didn't think they were attractive on the street, let that be your guide. Walk away. Well, How well, you doing? well. Oh, okay, number right. five. <laughs> yeah, so number five, the world's most remote island is now much easier to get to. San Hel Helena is a small island in the South Atlantic Ocean. It's best known as a place where Napoleon Bonaparte was exiled to in 1815. Up until 2017, it was only reachable by boat, and that trip took about five days because it's 1,200 miles from the nearest continent. But now you can get there by plane. The island finally has high-speed internet, and the message is to visit with an open mind, whatever that means. Mm. We've got a few DVD shops. Ooh, maybe a laser disc. <laughs> if you're looking for a good hike, you can take a trek up Jacob's Ladder. It's a 600-foot-high outdoor staircase. Oh, Lord. And you have to climb 699 steps to get to the top. Not 700, wow. 699. Nope. Thanks. All right, Maybe. number four, we hear about those towns in Italy selling uh, homes for a, a dollar or oh, a yeah. euro, as they say over there. <laughs> they say, they say. <laughs> Their currency, yes. Yeah. It's about the same. <laughs> in an attempt to attract new residents, uh, but one town is struggling to bring in new people. Patricia is located south of Rome. It's got more than 40 properties available, and they've been vacant since the early 1900s. That's because officials cannot sell the homes without permission from the original owners or their heirs. So the process is a bit more complicated if nobody is coming forward to claim the homes in the first place. The town's mayor issued a public call for owners to come forward. So far, he's tracked down 10 of them, but there are lots of family disputes and relatives choosing not to sell out of revenge. Oh, out of character. And <laughs> <laughs> but gee, seems like a place you'd want to live. Yeah. Uh, Pretty. Yeah. A bunch of, mm. bunch of Italian infighting. <laughs> <laughs> you got enough of that yeah. Yeah. in the United States. All right, number three, we're looking at tourist attractions that no longer exist, like Sutro Baths in San Francisco. Back in the 19th and 20th centuries, the Sutro Baths were a popular attraction. They were designed by a man named Adolf Sutro, and he created a giant bathhouse with works of art, restaurants, performance areas, and a series of giant swimming pools. The baths became less popular during the Great Depression and were ultimately turned into giant skating rinks. The building was sold off in the 60s, there was a fire, and now it's a recreational area. So it's just big swimming pools, Yeah, I huh? guess I always thought, yeah, I didn't really... Well, maybe they're not... The Why is it a bath? Is it chlorinated? At the time, no. So I, you know what? Been. We don't... If... Wait. Sorry, no questions yeah. allowed. Yeah. I, like, I forgot. Did yeah, they no, use I... chlorine? <laughs> That's just sitting back going, no, let him no, I'm just That's enjoying. a question, Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I know. We don't usually have those answers. Uh -huh. <laughs> we learned that to ask yeah. because we know we don't know. That was my know. fault. I yeah. should have known. Yeah. It's okay. No, I have nothing to add. I'm just enjoying <laughs> this discourse. That's all. Don't all right, Fred, right, you're, you're on. Yeah. You Number two. So this is a matter of preference. You guys let me know. But what's the best way to eat a chocolate Easter bunny? Feet first, ears first. According to the National Confectioners Association, most people eat the ears first. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't really eat the chocolate bunnies at all. I used to when I was a kid. Yeah, I did too. But mm. the hollow ones, no good. That's you have what to I get mean. The solid. Yeah. You need solid. Yeah. Full calories. Well, not all of us had tile money growing up, Robin. Some of us ate, <laughs> some of some of us ate hollow bunnies. <laughs> the generic I hollow bunnies. I apologize. Mm -hmm. That was a bit of a flex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of us ate uh, utility worker salaries. Oh, wow. Yeah. We.
Number one, people on BuzzFeed are sharing their so-called private meals. It's the stuff they like to eat when nobody else is around. Huh? Anyway, here are a few of our favorites. When her husband's not around, one woman likes two waffles sandwiched together with peanut butter and chocolate chips. That sounds Ooh. good. Yeah, that just sounds good to me. Pretty good. Another guy says his go-to private meal is Sara Lee cherry pie topped with Cool Whip. Are these supposed to be strange? This all no, feels normal. Know. They're more, sh are they ashamed I of I guess they're like, this is what I'm gonna eat for dinner when yeah. my spouse isn't here to judge me for not okay. eating a real meal, maybe. Uh -huh. Uh, another woman says she makes a box of stovetop oh. stuffing and eats the whole thing. Yeah. I do love stuff. I do too. Yeah. Another guy is single and he says bagel dogs <laughs> topped with Cheetos is his oh. favorite private meal. But he doesn't eat that when visitors come over. Uh, oh, and then they add a, a question at the end. <laughs> well, any of you have interesting private meals. I'd love to hear. I, guess, I thought really the share. private meal is like, I don't want to have to share it. At least that's from my perspective. Yeah. Like, we yeah. had, there was like Sushi Wednesdays back in Milwaukee, and it's like, that was my favorite meal to grab without my husband. Hope he's not watching. But it's like, I don't want to share it. I feel yeah. like right. it's more than like a shameful thing. It's like, I don't want it to share this, right. so I'm going to eat it without. Yeah, so I don't know if it's shame or not, but I eat it all right out there. I don't care. <laughs> That's what I, I was mean, thinking. I, I was like, I, I, I can just go for it. So I don't want to share it with yeah. somebody. Then I, yeah. <laughs> No. Pat, do you this want to answer? This is just like the view, isn't no, it? I, I am, I am <laughs> no, I have nothing. No, God, God, look at this. It's 6.52 already. We, we got, got our, our male voice right We're here. We're going to have a story if we don't wrap this up. <laughs>